Yo, what's up with it once again, ladies and gentlemen, fanboys and fangirls, Nintendo Sony Free 2011 here came Manny Warring. You guys are rested interested in the Trish Lord's channel. Find me on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, BitChute and all that stuff, and Brighton. Anyways, I know it's been a while, but I had this really, 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 really nice ass smooth as freaking hell. Really, really good Batman shirt. I've been wanting this thing for about two years now, and I finally got this thing, though. It's like Amazon eBay, I think I got it from, I don't know. I got one of my size, too, because I'm a pretty big-ass dude. Anyways, I was going to talk about this $400, like, official update for the Atari VCS. And somebody has Atari in the background there. <laughs> Not that official console, but the 800, VCS 800, Atari new VCS 700 is going to be 400 bucks. I'm going to put this in a separate video, but I'm here to do the reaction. You guys read the title. It's a little bit more personal for me, too, because I've been watching this chick for, like, three and a half years one of the best anime manga artists. It's kind of like a manga reaction in a way, but she does a lot of embarrassing, funny ass stories. I'm probably gonna have to cut it in a few parts, pause the video a few times, but links in the description box down below to the full video. I'll have links and um, sources, thing to that. <sighs> this one hit me, hit me in emotional feels when I heard about this. It's over a week old. I'm not the only one that reacted to a lot of Emery Chu's like videos. There's millions of other people that did. She has like. 2.5 million subscribers. I remember when she used to have like 700, 800,000, but she just took off from there ginormously. <laughs> I'm sorry if I sound a little bit different. I'm not under the weather or anything. But yeah, three, two, one, let's get in. Oh man, so my Asian American identity crisis. I know I'm not Asian, I'm Hispanic. I'm Mexican, Puerto Rican, like 5% Spaniard, but that's a. I don't really get too much into that because it's a little bit of a private, you know, touchy fucking sub, but with this, I had to react to. Three, two, one, let's go. Today's topic is a bit more personal to me, and for a short while, I thought maybe it wouldn't be entertaining enough to talk about. But I also know that there's probably a lot of people who can relate to my experiences growing up. So here we go. Let's talk about my Asian American identity crisis. So quick summary on how I got here. My parents were immigrants who moved from South Korea to America in the 1980s to start a new life where they had my two older brothers and me. So, while my ethnicity is Korean, my nationality has always been American. Growing up, I always felt really distant from my Korean background. I'm not sure what- I'm not the only one that felt that way. I remember, I was still living upstate New York, and in New York City, I didn't really, really feel like that, but since I was half Mexican, there weren't that many other Mexican kids around, like, how I was. So I acted a lot more Puerto Rican than I did Mexican, and oh my god, it was a big-ass, harsh, fucked-up time in my life to even think about stuff like that, because- a seven, eight year old me at the time in the 90s, like, shouldn't have given a shit about that, but I did, because I was real curious, and not until I moved out here to Nevada, that's when I started learning more about my Mexican Hispanic heritage a lot more on a deeper level. I barely learned Spanish until I was like 14, 15 years old. And uh, you get shunned down for that a fuck ton, so I know Asians aren't the only one that went through that shit. Me as a Hispanic Latino person, even though I'm still American, I was born and raised in this country, but man, at the same time, that shit emotionally mentally it gets to you and drills you in your freaking head saying oh you got to be this person in one minute and then the next person you got to be somebody else it is fucking exhausting i can understand where she's coming from with that it started but for as long as i can remember i've always felt kind of disconnected from it it didn't really help that we lived in a super white area so there weren't many other koreans to talk to i remember my dad would always be like why don't you have more korean friends dad you kind of kind of didn't give me a whole lot to work with here <laughs> i'd like to mention that despite growing up in an area with very little diversity i was never bullied specifically for being asian aside from the occasional annoying microaggressions and asian jokes from what i can recall nobody had ever gone out of their way to make me feel isolated from my race oh that right there when i was living upstate new york i got way fucking isolated it was either 50 or 100 percent black people or almost 100 percent whites no offense to anyone who's watching my channel, but I'm at almost 820 subscribers. I'm almost at 900 pretty soon. Instead of 1,000, I was going to do something for 900 instead. And that's a big-ass milestone for me if I ever get to that. I'm just happy with the 820 people that watch my videos almost every day, even though it's only 40 or 50 of you guys that watch it. But I'm still grateful, as always, for that shit. From the bottom of my heart, I love it. But that shit, that got to me. That got to my core, too. And you're the, like, one of the only few people that's out there in the race, and they... Tell everybody, hey, what's it like to do this? What's it like to celebrate Dia de los Muertos and Cinco de Mayo? Even though Cinco de Mayo was like an American, Caucasian freaking holiday. That wasn't even from a Hispanic holiday, period. And do your own research on that, but let's move on. 
Just making it clear that this video has very little to do with bullying and more to do with my own internal struggle. So where should I start? When I was in fourth grade, my music class was playing an end of the year party and our music teacher told us to bring in CDs so she could play our favorite songs. Now, I didn't own any CDs and my older brothers were definitely not going to let me borrow any of theirs. So my mom gave me a CD with Korean music to bring to class. I remember adamantly refusing to take it because I knew it wouldn't fit with anyone else's music and nobody would be able to understand it. She insisted I bring it and that you'll be introducing your classmates to something new. I didn't want to show up empty handed, so I reluctantly took it with me to class the next day and handed it off to- That reminds me of this one crazy ass story that happened to me and like, I think my mom's or my pops said, oh, I want to introduce you to salsa merengue bachata and all that. Some real, real crazy stuff back then. It was not fun, but. It was like super embarrassing as hell for me to do, and I did it anyways. I think I was like 10, 11, 12 at the time. Ah, oh, I got laughed at halfway, and that shit scarred me emotionally for the rest of my life afterwards. It was not fun, I never did it again. My teacher, secretly hoping that we'd run out of time before she could play it. Now, I'm well aware that in this current age, blasting Korean music in your class party would probably make things mega hype. But keep in mind, this was like 2005. That sort of thing wasn't going to catch on for like another six years. During the party, we heard hits from Usher, Shakira, the Black Eyed Peas, Mariah Carey, Linkin Park, you know, music that literally everyone was familiar with. And then my mom's CD was played. And just as I'd feared, all my classmates reacted with, What the heck is that? I can't understand what they're saying. This sounds weird. And confused laughter filled the room. So I spent the rest of the class bawling underneath one of the chairs. Now listen, before you go canceling my entire fourth grade class, I know for a fact my classmates weren't trying to hurt my feelings. They were kids. And when you introduce kids to something unfamiliar or strange, they're gonna laugh. My music teacher sternly lectured the rest of the class about the importance of embracing different cultures, but I stayed underneath that chair until the bell rang. I wasn't crying because I thought my classmates were being mean. I was crying because I was embarrassed. I knew this would be their reaction, and I told my mom this exact thing was going to happen. Mm -hmm. That small event might have been the start of it. I'm not really sure. All right, Asian viewers, how many times have you heard something like, whoa, your English is really good. I don't hear an accent. I still get comments like that from time to time, and here's my secret. Ever since I was a child, my English has always been significantly better than my Korean. I, ah, I used to get that a few times, but here in, like, in Vegas, it's like a whole other different world out here. And like, that's when I really, really had to realize, oh, I got to learn Spanish faster. I'm going to be screwed up the ass really, really badly by my own people, which half of them were criminals and crooks anyways at the time. I'm not saying all of them are. They're still good, genuine, humble-ass people in there, but... I'll see you guys in part two in a minute. Okay, so back to what I was saying earlier before. Ugh, man. I remember I had a few times I had to deal with racist bullshit a little bit. Not completely, but just a little bit. When I was in upstate New York compared to New York City and boroughs, I didn't have to deal with it as much. Thank God. But when I came out here, it was like almost non-existent. Thank God. In this state, a lot more accepting than Hispanics. But let's move on with this trip because <laughs> I had to get a little bit of a drink too. Let's drink this rain thing. Oh! It's crazy, this chick's a lot younger than I am. This is gonna be 25 next year, next month, in August. She's young enough to be my younger freaking sister, but my God, I've seen a bunch of her Instagram pictures in real life. You know how I am when it comes to Asian women as like one of the most hottest, beautiful, gorgeous women on the fucking planet, in my own personal opinion. Even if they're not Japanese girls, they'd be Korean, Taiwanese, Singaporean, Chinese, I don't give a shit which one they are. They're still beautiful as fuck to me, in my own personal opinion. I know it's gonna sound biased and hopefully not racist, because I still like the women in my race, Hispanic, Latino women. I still like white girls and a few like Indian, Middle Eastern chicks and black women occasionally. Not always all the time with them, but let's move on. I spoke only English at school and at home, and since I didn't really have other Korean friends, there was rarely ever a time where I'd have to use Korean. Mm. This resulted in years of me being comfortable with responding to my parents in English, even if they were using Korean. I think they assumed that if they kept speaking... Lucky for me, on my dad's pop side, um, he was born and raised in the U.S. like I was too, but most of his family was Puerto Rican, not that many of them knew Spanish. Only like one or two knew Spanish. But the dialogue with Puerto Rican Spanish and Mexican Spanish was like a whole other different world. That's why I sucked at the Mexican version of Spanish. <laughs> Sometimes it would put Spanglish in there, which is English and Spanish, but I don't know how the Asian people do it, and Koreans, I'm not sure. I did have a friend a couple times, so he was Korean and Filipino, and... 
his whole world's a lot more different than mine was, but I've seen it. Introduced me to a lot of things where I had to take my shoes off every time I went to over his house. And that was a big eye opener. They had Korean barbecues, they had a lot of Korean festival K pop stuff before the whole BTS crap happened, and a whole bunch of other things. Like, they ate with chopsticks. That was the first introduction. This was like 2007 or wait. That was on my junior, senior year of high school. And that was a big ass eye opener, opener for me. And some Filipinos that kind of have same almost cultural customs like Hispanics and Mexicans do. And when I came over here, I didn't know what Filipinos were until I moved out here. Because East Coast, there's not that many of them. Or Midwest. I think a lot of them in the West Coast and like Texas are real, real big, giant populations of Asian people. Just cool as fuck. And the women are the most beautiful thing in their race. And they're not trying to simp. I'm not simping out for this chick. I swear to God, I'm not. So don't call me a fucking male white knight simp motherfucker. Because that's not what I am. You happen to watch this Emily or MK Emergency. I swear to God, I'm not simping for you. I, I totally relate it. I get where you're coming from. Racial discrimination is a fucking bitch. It hurts. I get that. And let's move on. Korean, I'd eventually pick it up and master the grammar and vocab and be fluent. But that never really happened. As each year passed, my parents would become increasingly more worried about my refusal to learn. One summer, when I was around 11 or 12, I was picking blueberries with my dad at a blueberry farm. We would call out to each other back and forth. He'd call out in Korean and I'd respond in English. At one point... That's the same thing I did with my mom because my dad's side, he was born and raised in the U.S. My mom's side, she was raised in like Guadalajara or Mexico or Guatemala somewhere, one of those two countries. Whenever she responded to something in Spanish, I would say it back in English. That's how I would learn it with her and communicate with her on that side. Except this one's with Korean. It's a whole different thing. I get what... What, like her growing up like sort of like kind of grew up in the same sort of level of um environment and we both did because we're both mainly surrounded by either white people or blacks and that was a another nearby blueberry picker commented on this exchange i couldn't help but over here but i noticed you two talking in two different languages what's that all about oh this is my daughter she understands korean but can't speak it very well so she uses english uh. oh that's a shame well, it's not too late for her to learn, right? Well, a shame. How many languages do you know, lady? It bothered me a little that she called it a shame. That wasn't the first time I'd heard that, and it most certainly wasn't going to be the last. Whether it was people from church, my grandparents, other Korean relatives, or my own parents, my inability to properly speak Korean was oftentimes referred to as a shame. I knew my parents felt embarrassed every time they had to explain to someone that I only used English. And truthfully, I was really embarrassed too. But I was hesitant to speak Korean because I was worried that I'd make a fool out of myself from screwing up. But because I didn't try, I never got better, which turned into this vicious cycle of little improvement. With every new birthday, the window of time for how bad I could be at Korean felt like it was getting shorter and shorter. And the weight of shame and dishonor felt heavier and heavier. Oh, it's funny how she did that little Mulan reference. I like that. Oh, that's cool. I like how she did that. It's real, real funny. Um, but it's real sad, man. The whole dishonor and shameness, like, I didn't get that. But, like, the disappointment and regret. Whenever I went to Mexico, like, once every two years, they would, like, look at me like I was the black sheep of the whole fucking family. And that really fucking sucks. Same with my younger relative, which I'm not going to say their name on there because I'm going to keep their name private. But some real crazy stuff. Hold on. All right, let's continue. You're probably going to see a text one or two here. I can't do nothing about that, but let's move on. Ever since I was a kid, I put a lot of energy into spelling and reading comprehension. The lowest grade I ever got on a spelling test was an 88% in like fourth. I know there's a lot of really, really big bad of them stereotypes when it comes to Asian people and stuff. And when it comes to them like, oh, getting their languages read and getting all A's. And if they get a B, they get their ass kicked in Spanish or, or in math and social studies and scientific and chemistry and all that shit i didn't get that as much thank god because <laughs> i wasn't raised in a stereotype asian home thank god but if i would have been oof, uh i would have got so many spankers i got whippings and spankers for different reasons though because i was kind of a fucking brat when i was in middle school and high school i was an asshole a lot more compared to now i know how to like be more mature grown sane responsible adult back then whew, i was almost a tornado back then great and i cried that day I prided myself on being a proficient essay writer and an avid reader. I needed to be I had little lucky star reference. excellent at all things English-based because I didn't know how to be good at the other language I was supposed to know. 
Don't get me wrong, I genuinely loved to read and write, but I think subconsciously I wanted to separate myself from my Korean roots as much as possible. And I also think, subconsciously, that the fear of shame eventually turned into resentment. As a kid, I hated visiting Korea, and I dreaded the annual family trip because it only further reminded me of how out of place I was every time I went, especially amongst my Korean-speaking relatives who I couldn't really hold a conversation with. I hated talking to my grandparents on the phone because they knew that all I knew how to say was 할머니, 할아버지, 안녕하세요, and 네, and every time they'd go 아이고, 우리 은혜 한국말 잘하네! And I knew they were just saying that out of pity. Come on, Graham and Gramps, you don't have to lie to me like that. <sighs> Man, it was embarrassing. The resentment went past just not wanting to use the language. Luckily for me, my grandparents on my mom's side didn't care about that, but my grandparents on my dad's side, they knew English and Spanish, I was cool with them. Fortunately, one of them passed away like three years ago. My granddad, my grandmother at the time, my old man's side, she passed away in 2013, a couple years ago. That's why if you saw videos of me in 2013 when I was a little bit more extra depressed, it was like the third year I had this channel. I was doing videos here on this channel for two years at that time. You know why? It really, really fucking sucked because I missed all our cooking, the Puerto Rican island cooking and the Puerto Rican like snakes and snake snacks and her freaking beautiful Puerto Rican banana and flan pudding. Oh, God, I miss that shit so damn much. That shit hurt me. But my mom's side, like, I get it on my grandpa's mom's side, but my grandma, my mother's side, she was okay with me not knowing that much Spanish. She didn't, like, snarl or struggle at me or point the fingers. Oh, you got to learn Spanish fucking better. And I didn't say it like that, but they said it with love. Well, let's move on. Which I convinced myself that I didn't like Korean food, that I thought humbooks were ugly, and that I just didn't vibe with other Korean people. Sometimes I even felt envious of other Koreans, particularly the ones who grew up similar to me but seemed completely different. My dad's a pastor with a lot of Korean pastor friends, meaning I often met other pastor's kids who were all super in touch with their Korean background, super involved in their church life, and were usually musically gifted in some way. I happened to be none of these things, and it sort of felt like that meant there was nothing for my parents to be proud of in comparison. Like, my kid is in the honors program at school, and is set to go on their fourth mission trip this summer. What's your kid been up to? She, uh, she likes to draw. Been doing lots of that. Oh, like fashion design? Animation for a potential career in Disney? No anime. Oh, ew. Yeah, I know. A lot of people told me that watching K-dramas is a good way to practice my Korean, but admittedly, I was overall disinterested in consuming any kind of Korean media, and I convinced... We have that same thing, but they call Spanish telenovelas. Novelas or um, sopa I don't know what it was. Soap operas. And that's how they used to say it over there. Except I don't know how K-pop, like, Spanish novelas work, because Spanish novelas are a lot more different. They only last for, like, five, seven months. Korean ones, I'm not sure how long they last. I never really watched them. I watched a few Filipino ones here and there, but I never saw the Korean drama like um, TV show. So I don't know how those work out there. They're probably in a different level, but let's move on. I to myself that I probably wouldn't be into it anyway. I was pretty stubborn about this, except for one exception music. My cousin Alice and I are the same age, but have always had a pretty big language barrier between us. So it was usually a little awkward whenever we visited each other because we weren't able to have an actual conversation. Our parents would drop us off at a mall or something and be like, Okay, have fun catching up, girls. Pick you up in a few hours. And we'd be speaking in a weird Frankenstein mix of broken English and broken Korean. Well, one summer, Alice showed up with an iPod, and during that week she was visiting, she introduced me to her favorite music artists, most of it being K-pop. We'd share her earbuds during long car rides, and she'd play music on her phone speaker at night when we couldn't fall asleep. We didn't really need to have long, extensive conversations. We'd just jam out to her favorite songs, and it was a great way for me to connect with her without the need to awkwardly stumble through a language barrier. That's probably one of my fondest memories with my cousin, and after she left, that's when I first started listening to Korean music for the first time in my life. And as ridiculous and silly as it probably sounds, it was one of the only things that kept me somewhat connected to my Korean identity. Did I understand any of the words? No, of course not. But I didn't feel ashamed about not understanding because I didn't have to in order to enjoy it. Also, Google was great for looking up translations. <laughs> you want to hear about one of my biggest regrets? I think the worst thing I've ever said to my dad was in high school when we were having a huge argument and I told him, I wish I had white parents. 
I know it sounds silly, but I really broke his heart that day. And even though I was angry from feeling suffocated and trapped by sheltered parenting, I failed to recognize that raising three very Americanized children in an unfamiliar country must have been difficult. I regret every time I've ever called myself a Twinkie or whitewashed as if it was something to be proud about and not a totally obvious proclamation of my insecurities. It wasn't like I woke up one morning and decided, I don't want to be Korean anymore. It was a natural progression, and I didn't even realize the kind of self-loathing I was internalizing until I was older. I sort of wish I had someone there to tell me that it was okay to not be confident in the language, and that just because I was like 16 with the reading and speaking level of a kindergartner, I wasn't automatically a total failure or a lost cause for it. And maybe you're thinking, but Emily, what about your two older brothers? Guess what? They were going through the same exact thing. You didn't think it was just me, did you? I think we were all separately dealing with our own weird identity crises, and in a way, I think I was just following in their footsteps of trying to separate themselves from their Korean roots. As an adult now, I'm trying harder to embrace the Korean side of myself a bit more. I don't feel the same resentment as I did when I was younger, but the shame will still come back every now and then. I get- Oh, man. I remember how that shit felt. I didn't get in an argument with my parents like that really, really bad, but like 11, 12 years ago, but man. That shit, I was with like one of my uncles on my mom's side of the uncles, and I got in a fucking heated fucking arm in his ass, and it was kind of a piece of shit. Not gonna lie, it was an asshole like a motherfucker. But half the time it was cool, other times it was a piece of fucking garbage, man. And it was sometimes, oh, I wish I would have been fucking Caucasian instead of Mexican and Puerto Rican, because all these fucking extra standards, double standards, you gotta goddamn freaking impress people and kiss other people's asses. You don't even freaking know on a personal physicals like standard you know and that shit really heated me up back then and then again i was like 16 17 at the time and I, I didn't know any better i was still growing up i was a little bit of a fucking rebellious ass clown i didn't have any older relatives i was the older like sibling at the time so anyways uh, let's move on I'm excited to visit korea now but when i do go i'm quickly reminded of how much of a foreigner i am and i get a little self-conscious especially if i'm with my parents and strangers get super confused with the language disparity between us and then my parents get self-conscious because then they're questioned with why didn't you teach your kid korean if you're both korean you know no bueno feelings all around I remember the last time I visited Korea, I was walking around with my brother Josh, and we kept noticing that older people would just keep staring at us. I asked, why do they keep staring at us? And he just went, it's because they know we're not from here. Like, maybe they could tell we were Korean, but like super off and not right. They could smell the filthy American influences on us or something. I don't know. I also feel like older Koreans just really like to stare for no reason. My oldest brother, Sim, told me that when he had to deal with the old person staring thing, he'd just stare right back at them until they got uncomfortable. But I don't really have the balls to do that myself. Ever since my parents moved to Korea a few years ago, the need to use any Korean has been completely removed from my daily life. And it kind of feels like the language barrier gets a little bigger every time we talk and limits how much we can talk about when we catch up. The easy answer would be to just get better at Korean, and I agree, I should. But I found that it's a lot easier to learn and retain a language when it's something you're interested in learning, rather than something that'll make you feel like a failure if you don't progress as quickly as you should. I should be learning it because being bilingual is super useful and cool, not because I feel like I owe it to my ancestors, who I fear are all looking down on me in disapproval. And truthfully, I still don't know how to shake that feeling. And that's partly why it took a bit of a while to finally put my thoughts on paper. Because I haven't figured out the big secret answer to my identity crisis. And I knew if I waited around for some kind of grand old epiphany to happen, I would have made zero progress. I know there's probably a whole bunch of people watching who have experienced or are experiencing something similar. And if you are, you aren't alone. Thank God I'm not the only one that's alone. Because I, me right here, I used to freaking go through that shit every time. I had to deal with like some of my people. Some of them are very ignorant, very, very prideful. Oh, viva la Mexico, viva la Mexico, and shit. Like, I get that. I understand where they're coming from, but I couldn't freaking relate to that because I wasn't born and raised in Guatemala, Mexico, Argentina. That I was raised in the United States. That always was their fucking trigger words. I don't know why, but that's how I saw them as. And that sucks because I don't want to be the enemy. I want to be the relatable person. You aren't a failure or a race traitor for not knowing your parents' native language or struggling to connect with the culture. 
Of course, I don't mean to say give up because it's hard. I think celebrating the different cultures that make up the facets of who you are is important. But I also recognize that it's easy to get discouraged when you grow up in an environment that makes you doubt yourself. If I could go back and talk to a younger version of myself, I'd tell her to not let the resentment and fear of shame hold her back from at least trying. But you know, like most things, it's a lot easier said than done. I'm so happy to be finally done with this video. I've actually had this idea in the back of my mind since around last year, but it took a while for me to figure out how to script it because this topic sort of encompasses my entire life. So of course, there's a lot of stuff I had to leave out in order to save time. Hopefully it didn't come off sounding too rambly or disorganized. If you've had similar feelings about your own cultural identity, I'd really like to hear about it and the ways it affected you. Obviously, you don't have to be Korean to relate, but if you can relate in any way, I'd like to know your thoughts. Anyways, I hope you're all continuing to wash your hands and staying informed in these troubling times. I'll catch you guys in July. Ah, oh, that broke at me right there. That really broke me a little bit. Yeah, because you already know what that whole thing with, oh, the C virus and alcohol drink virus and oh the pandemic and shit to me it's the pandemic as some fake argument stage psyop freaking government drill that they're running all here in the united states maybe other parts of the world too i heard spain and freaking brazil is getting at the worst of the worst right now and that sucks but anyways overall thoughts these and opinions i can relate 110 million fucking percent and that sucked as man not saying my child was garbage. Sometimes it was fun when I used to play anime, video games, read a few book novels. Like I even read one or two of the Harry Potter books. That's so why I really, really read, hate it, reading that. But that's not what this video is about. I will say this. Emery Chu, Emily, you are a freaking hero for making this video, man. You're not stunning and brave. I'm not going to say that because I don't want to sound like a simp, white knight motherfucker. But my God, I can relate to 100% of the shit that she went through, man. So much. Sometimes your aunts, your uncles, and your own, like, grandparents might turn behind your back like they did with me on my mom's side of the family did my dad's side they were very accepting they're opening to a lot of things there's to a certain extent of course because they came from the 1940s 50s 60s way before my ass was alive so i wasn't born until like later in 1989 at the time and yeah there's certain things they didn't like me hearing certain music or dressing a certain fucking way my grandparents my parents didn't care as much thank god my grandparents did it will give me a little bit of a scalling howl and seeing the shit that I, oh, you like anime, you like superhero stuff, you're going to go to hell. You want to see, um, want to listen to certain music, you want to listen to certain visual novels, you're going to go to hell for that. You want to play this game and that game or watch movies, you're going to go to hell for this. It, this is a really fucking strict religious base. That's all I got to say for now. Emery Chu, you are a freaking goddess. In my own personal opinion, in Instagram, you're a freaking badass chick. Don't ever stop what you're doing. You got 2.5 million subscribers. You're a lot more bigger than I'm ever going to be. That's it. That's all I got to say for now. I'm out of here. Links to description box down below. It's a full video without me distracting. That's it. Peace out once again, ladies and gentlemen, fanboys and fangirls. And as always, people and otakus out there, I will see you when I see you guys today. Have a good night. Wherever you're out in the universe out there, stay tuned for more future um, kinds of channels, including video game industry news, Twitter drama, YouTube beef news, and, and um, what else? Internet news. And that's it. Take it easy. Peace out. I'm like Carl. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you in the flip side. I'll leave the link to Emery Chu's um, Instagram and Twitter down below if you want to check it out. And that's it. Peace. I'm out of here. Goodbye.